Welcome back once again to the Failing Writers Podcast for another dose of writing medicine. Open wide. Here it comes. Welcome back, everyone. Here we are again. We are, you know, we're knee deep in season two now, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Episode Chugging along at a fair three. rate of knots. Sort of more up to our ankle, I reckon. Yeah. Mm. Fair Mid cuff. Fair enough. Maybe, perhaps. Unnecessary okay. correction on the completely arbitrary metaphor. But thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. I like to be accurate, uh, you know? We're in now. Oh, and happy Easter, yeah. everyone, by the way. Happy Easter. Merry eggs. Happy yes. Yeah. Bon Earth. Bon Earth, as they say. Literally nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I remember as a kid being so disappointed that Easter eggs were hollow. I remember <laughs> getting my first like Easter egg as maybe like a four year or five year old. And like yeah. you know, he's yeah. sitting just there and then you kinda of, Oh, it's just like it's that's very light. What's wrong with mine, Mum? There's, yeah. there's, there's yeah. air inside it. <laughs> Although Easter eggs used to be loads better, didn't they? Because you don't get like a mug with them anymore. Do you remember all the ones when we were kids? You used to get like a mug, It'd be like a mm. a crunchy mug or a Smarties mug. Well, and the egg would be I, like propped on the, top. I think you you must have. That, that's quite. That's the posh end, isn't I it? I think that's the posh end. The when mug. I was my when I was little, the yeah. your little surprise, your Smarties or whatever, were inside the egg. Yeah, in a little plastic. I was about to say that. Yeah, in now the they're egg. separate. I don't know if mm. that's health and safety reasons. Yeah. Or it's a cost thing, isn't it? Cost. Separate sweets to eggs. I, I put the sweets back in the eggs. That's what I <laughs> we say. Should, a, should we start a campaign? Should we do one of those petition things where you get people to sign I up think and then so. they have to discuss it in part? Yeah, you yeah. go. If we can get 50,000 <laughs> petition people to say, put the sweets back in the eggs. Do it. Come on. Bloody do it. Is it just me that does this? But every year, Katie and I buy Easter eggs for the kids, like a couple of weeks before Easter. And then we always end up having to replace them because... Inevitably, they they sort of they sort of call to you from the cupboard. John, <laughs> you mean we're you in eat here. your children's oh. treats? Yeah, That's just them. we just always end up eating their Easter eggs, and then we have to replace them. I think I think I've just heard a few listeners leave in disgust at that. <laughs> we do replace there them. Though. There weren't many here to begin with, were no. there? So, oh. but they're lovely, aren't they? Easter eggs? It's like that really cheap. Waxy milk chocolate. So you buy your kids cheap <laughs> Easter eggs Good and then stuff. get thrills by eating the forbidden cheap <laughs> cooking chocolate Easter eggs. John, 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 John. John. <sighs> totally. Well, it says a lot about you, <laughs> probably, I think, John, doesn't it? Um, but anyway, we're not here to talk about Easter, are we? Not? Good point, Dave. All oh, right, I thought this was the uh, Easter chat, but yeah, fair no. enough. <laughs> the Easter special. Uh, what we we are here to talk about uh, competitions, or specifically a competition. The I think David for once, Nobbs Dave, you failed Memorial to do a segue Trust. from one random topic to another there. Can you not connect? Can you not connect Easter mm, to, to, to the David mm. Nobbs Memorial Trust? Uh, <laughs> well, it turns out uh, it's, it's, it's... No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to fit yoke into that sentence somewhere. Just like John fit. stole away the chocolate from his own children's mouth, Dave's victory in the David Nobbs Memorial Trust Bursary Award was stolen from him by one of our interviewees who decided to win it instead. Yes, of it. and we have we have the thief on the line tonight, <laughs> yeah, don't we? Yeah. Um, it's like a bumper issue today. We've got an interview with Margaret Caborn Smith from the David Nobbs Trust talking about the bursary and the competition, and then we have last year's winner. We have Zoe Tomalin come to talk to us about what it feels like to win because, well, let's face it, we don't really know. Very true, dude. Sad but true. Dave, do you want to do a fantastic introduction? I'll do an introduction, Tom. Let's not uh, over-egg it, but um, all that we need to say really is uh, welcome to the podcast, Margaret Caborn smith Hello. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure. Well pronounced as well. Oh, did I get it right? That's a relief. I've <laughs> yeah, been worrying about that all day. <laughs> so I can never get Smith right. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. My favourite was when I, I won a raffle once and they said Margaret Kaboom Smith. Wow, that's exciting. <laughs> I would have stuck with that <laughs> if I were you. I would have gone with that. Like the Michael Bay of surnames. So for anyone who doesn't know, Margaret is a, a comedy actress who's appeared in such hits as Catastrophe, The IT Crowd, Psychoville, Peep Show, Fresh Meat and Motherland. Yeah. That's quite a lot of good stuff, it isn't is. it? I was in the pilot of Motherland playing a teacher and then they asked me back three years later to play the head teacher, at which point my husband said, oh, your, your fake career is going better than your real career. Yeah, that's a good promotion, <laughs> that is. But 
Obviously, Margaret, you're here today in your capacity as a trustee of the David Nobbs Memorial Trust. That's right. So could you could you start just by telling us a, a little bit about the trust and, and its aims? Sure. So, I, oh God, I mean, this is so immediately so scary because it's the most grown up thing I do being a trustee of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does sound no like a responsibility, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, awful. Um, so the David Nobbs Memorial Trust was set up just after David died Um by a few of us who were sort of, you know, mix of friends and fans. And obviously, so the title Memorial, it's a way of remembering someone. And David was a very established comedy writer. He wrote Reggie Perrin and A Bit of a Do and Henry Pratt, various novels and sitcoms. And, you know, was amazing. But also he was incredibly encouraging of new writers in quite an unusual way. Like usually if you speak to an established writer and you say, oh, love to get into writing how would I like how would I do that they say we're full sod off <laughs> you know, but he, was, he yeah. was always like the last one at parties you know talking to young writers and being encouraging and I don't know about you guys but I always feel like all well, those encouraging words they're also they're almost more important than than anything you know they're the thing that yeah um so we decided to start a, a sort of a prize a an annual prize for emerging writers, um, which was, there was a thing that he was saying that when he was young and starting out, he just always would have appreciated just a chunk of money, which meant he didn't have to work on his other crappy jobs uh, and could Absolutely. finish something. Yeah, we, yeah. Well, that's a really nice idea. And, you know, a sort of small idea in a way, because we are a small charity. Um, we wanted to do something that would help someone who was sort of basically on the first rung of their career to just, mm. Yes. Trying, you know get up further so that the prize is it's annual and currently it's it's only one we'd really like to do an open door thing eventually but we just don't have the the resources sure so yeah and it's 750 pounds prize and then 250 pounds runner up that, you see it is not to be sniffed at no it's and not. it is very much the sort of thing that a lot of our listeners i say that as if we've got a lot of listeners but a lot of the listeners that we do have uh, will be you know sort of struggling in their writing career as our name suggests um, yeah. and entering competitions and entering bursaries um i i applied for this bursary this oh, year as well um so what I, what you're really here to answer is why didn't i win no this oh, well, the, best, <laughs> the best thing about being on the bloody board is i don't get to see anything ah. one of my best friends said to me i didn't even get shortlisted and i was like i don't i can't see Anything. You cannot blame me. I am not one of the readers. <laughs> Fair your friend said, "Well, can I have my fifty pounds back then, please?" Took that under false pretenses, if that's the case. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think the thing is with a lot of these competitions and bursary schemes is, is absolutely amazing as they are. You you obviously get a lot of entries, um, and it's yeah. just not possible to give individual feedback to each writer. So what we thought the idea of this was was to get a kind of general overview a bit of general feedback uh, for everyone who who has entered or might enter just to sort of encourage people to keep yeah. going really yeah um i suppose so the best piece of advice i ever had was um i did a workshop once with um chris douglas who wrote ed ridden's week and many other brilliant things and it's the thing that's always really stuck with me and he says confusion is the enemy of comedy and no one had ever put it like that to me before in terms of if you've got people who are not quite sure what the joke is or what the character is doing or what the you know that there's a confused reference you've you've lost them immediately and in fact lose them for the next you know few lines or whatever while you're trying to work out what that meant or what that was supposed to be yeah so with our competition it's the first 10 pages of a radio or tv sitcom pilot or four three minute sketches so obviously they're quite different in you know Mm. quite different beasts sure and I I can talk actually I can talk about our winner this year who was a woman called Zoe Tomalin uh, and she wrote 10 pages of a sitcom called Creeps I have read that yep again it's, it's very very clear she sets up a few characters over those 10 pages and puts them in some danger uh and you know and and just gives them very like clear funny little things to do she establishes relationships early on um and you know there's a big thing of do you want to read more and like I'm sure that we've all read like I know that you guys read what read other people's work yeah yeah as well yeah. Tom doesn't and Tom doesn't but 
Me and John. Really? Do, yeah. oh, I, sort, I sort of admire that. <laughs> <laughs> I read nothing but my own work. I don't even read that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Once I've written them, they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just send them off. Yeah. yeah I, um, it, you know that actually weirdly 10 pages can be quite long and sometimes quite quickly you can be bored I know it's bad to say but you can sort of you know you can get to two pages and think I don't really get this I haven't met a character that I care about you know and you sort of force yourself because you're reading for a competition force yourself to read Mm. to the end you know and obviously I'm not saying it needs to be um, I was going to say uh, car chases. Car chases don't happen, happen a lot in, in scripts. The classic they? comedy <laughs> car chase. Uh, right? not... There's just not enough of it around these days, is there? <laughs> Laboriously <laughs> described. Yeah, that's what you want. <laughs> or murders or anything, but just something that will keep you reading and keep you laughing, I suppose. I suppose the other thing I would say is don't overload it yeah. with characters. So that you're not sort of thinking, well, which one is that? Oh, also, this is a, a strange little tip, but one I really like. Give them quite oh, unusual yeah. names. Ah, okay. So that you're not, so that you're not like, I'm not talking about, you know, being called <laughs> Amoeba and, you yeah, know. Yeah, but maybe not Tom, <laughs> John and Dave, for example. Yeah, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> You've let yourself down. <laughs> yeah, we really have. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> um, yeah, so people can, you know, they're going, they're going to remember, and especially not names that are similar to each other. Yeah, yeah. So you're not going, yeah. oh, is that is that Julie or, or Jane? I didn't, you know, I hadn't clicked that they were different. That's people. why. That's why on the podcast, Dave's name isn't actually Dave. Dave's name is John Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to, we had to pick another one for. Oh, him. so yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. Also, amazingly, I'm sure this is a brilliant coincidence, but two of the characters from my piece were called Jane and Julie. Is um, that actually oh true? Oh, it is a so, Don't say that. that. Is, that's quite. That's remarkable. not true, is it? It is absolutely true. That is a hundred. It's good to get some direct feedback, though, isn't it, Dave? Oh my god, I feel sick. It is direct. Yeah, yeah. What exactly Straight it was? Straight into the heart. What exactly didn't Margaret like about my script? But and that, but this is the really interesting stuff because it's the, it's interesting what you said about uh, confusion being the enemy of comedy. I think that kind of works as a sort of writer as well. If mm. you're constantly writing stuff. And the only reason you know it's not funny is because you never hear back from anywhere you send it to, but you don't necessarily know why it's not funny. Um, so li- any any sort of little tips yeah. that can help, uh, you know, sort of uh, our listeners or a serial enterer of these sort of things is, is really useful. It's, it's, it's all classic stuff of, you know, be true to your own voice, even though it's tempting. Don't copy what the last big thing was, you know, don't. And also don't try and second guess what the judges want you know what they're looking for what they're looking for is good funny writing mm. they're not and particularly in this competition yeah. we're not looking even to make this show although obviously it would be great would, would be nice yeah, it would be nice wouldn't it but... well, i was going to ask about that what, what's the journey forward then for people if, if they do win the the bursary from the david Nobbs memorial Trust? well as well as getting all of that cash <laughs> Um, the part of the prize now is that two of our trustees are um, a, a commissioner and a producer, and part of the prize is to have a meeting with them to mm. talk about what next, which is invaluable. I mean, it's sort of, you know, as I say, like encouraging words and, and contact, as you know, contact is just a, a really big thing. I think it's just so easy to feel overwhelmed and just think, I don't, I don't know where to start yeah. uh, when you're sending stuff in and when you're trying to get stuff made and in a way that doesn't get easier but yeah having a producer to send stuff to or even a producer to say who should I send this yeah. to yeah is really helpful and we're hoping to get I mean because we've only been going a few years we're hoping to get more of a community together of like the the winners and the runners up to sort of to find out what they want to do and where they are intending to, mm. to go next because so you know some people are really ambitious and know all of this stuff and uh, you know so going this is what I want to do next this is what I want to do next but I think a lot of writers are just like I know I can write hate people like that yeah (laughs) how do they know know? I read the the first one of these that um first one of your podcasts that I listened to uh opened with you all saying you hadn't written anything and uh, and I really (laughs) I wonder which one that one was I really (laughs) loved it but I also love the idea that this whole podcast is just that every week and it's a kind of goddo like thing where no one ever (laughs) (laughs) the whole point is nobody ever writes anything 
I'm like, yeah, this is for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't supposed to be that way, but that's exactly it's, how it's turned Elements out. of that are coming through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, uh, reading about the David Nobbs Memorial Trust, it's such a wholesome, nice core value, isn't it? Mm. Where it comes from. It seems to come from a real wholesome, honest yeah, sort of place. Yeah, that's... Do you know that's I think that when I was thinking about what I was what I wanted to say today, it was because obviously I don't I don't know if any of you on like do any sort of charity things, you do get bogged down in the admin. Mm. It becomes a lot of sort of, you know, well, we need to reword this and we need to put this on our website. And you know, and um it was really nice thinking today about where it came from and and that sort of we just wanted to pay our respects and keep this man's memory alive and um, because he was somebody who had the best of intentions and yeah it's uh, that kind-heartedness isn't it kind yeah like a... generosity it's yeah. you know it's, it's really underrated he was the president of the of the writers guild for a while as well and everybody loved him which is you know my friend was saying it's very it's very useful because often when somebody's president of something like that they're a very divisive figure <laughs> and David, <laughs> David never was everyone always just loved him and loved um, how encouraging he was and you know he was prolific but actually he yeah. he suffered as well in terms of his work he definitely had big disappointments and and knockbacks as well as the the huge successes early, early on in his career I'm, I'm assuming or, or even early on, but, well, I mean actually actually later on I think he he lost a, a publisher um quite late on and so I think he just always understood what it was like to be a struggling yeah. writer you know to sort of have that oh god you know especially as and I know this you sort of you do one hurdle and you sort of think oh, great now yeah, I'm it. you know now this I'm on the, one. the ladder and then you, yeah. you stay on that rung for the next 20 years or sometimes go back down one. yes <laughs> yeah. um it's it's all about staying staying positive yes. and staying yeah, in the yeah. game. I'm very familiar with that yeah. particular ladder yeah <laughs> well we've heard we've heard a lot of stories like that with the people we've interviewed of all kinds of varying degrees of success but there's always the story in there of how everything was kind of snatched away or it all kind of crumbled or it was nearly a point of just packing it all in and giving it up. Yeah, the people who are successful are just the, you know, the ones that have stayed around the longest. <laughs> they mm. are the, I, obviously, there are people who get big very quickly, but I was thinking about um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Daisy May Cooper, and they, they're they both obviously phenomenally successful now, but they both, and they, and they both, I think, well, they went to drama school, you know, and mm. were, I think... Maybe, maybe expecting is the wrong word, but you know, we're, we're fully ready to do the the actor thing, yeah. and then realised that was, that that wasn't happening for a variety of reasons. So made mm. their own stuff, and what a brilliant thing to be able to do. And that's that is the joy of writing. I would say that if you get rejected, you you know, there's no point in if you're an actor, there's no point in doing a, a bitter monologue into the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to see it. But you can always go back and write something new. Say, right, I'm really going to show them this time and and actually finish something. Do you, <laughs> do you get? A, do you think there's a lot of entries in the bursary of uh, stories about bitter writers struggling, <laughs> struggling <laughs> to make it? Was yours? Yeah, Jane and Julie were these two bitter writers <laughs> who never succeeded. It's actually a great name for a, a comedy series, isn't it? Bitter, the, a the bitter monologue bitter. into a mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not being made, I'm telling you. Uh, Marvellous. Thank you very much for talking to us today, Margaret. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, have a lovely rest of the day. Thank you. So there you are, chaps. Confusion is the enemy of comedy. I think we could I think we could mm. take quite a lot away from yeah. that. I think yeah. if we're pitching something, people can only withhold a certain amount of information, can't they? If you can make it as simple as possible... We should I think be. That's a good call. Got to try and keep that in mind. We should be able to do simple. <laughs> we we? Sure, that should be if something anything, we're pretty good. They say write what you know, don't they? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> keep it simple. Um, yeah. No, I think that's the thing, isn't it? You keep the, the all the headline stuff and the top end stuff and the story arc needs to be simple and like explainable in a yeah. log line. And you can keep any intricacies and complicated bits and subtext for the script. But yeah. And if, yeah. if it's one of those things, you have to be willing to put stuff in. If no one gets it, that's fine. It's just kind of. It's there as mm. texture, as, as depth. But the yeah. overarching thing yeah. needs to be simple. <laughs> but you can't explain it. You can't, you can't explain it, can you? You can't go, well, no, this is funny because, no. right, wait, stay with me. <laughs> so it, no, right, 
it, then that's you. You can if you Stuart Lee actually. But that's <laughs> if you deconstruct it backwards. <laughs> but but, but then that becomes that's, a, that's an entire. But then that's quite yeah. a simple idea, isn't it? That that's what you're doing. Yeah. So then it goes. It, yeah. And you can't do that in a no. sitcom, to be fair. No, that's not really going to work. <laughs> do that in a sitcom these days, you get thrown in jail. <laughs> that's a Stuart Lee bit, isn't it? Sorry, no one seen that much. No, I didn't pick up on that. <clears throat> <laughs> so, from a bit of general talk and hints and tips on how to go about uh, being successful in that particular bursary to somebody who didn't need those hints and tips because they actually won it. Um, let's speak to Zoe Tomalin now about how she went about winning the bursary and what a difference it has made to her life already. So, uh, Let's start off by saying hello to Zoe Tomalin. Um, Hello. (laughs) Hello, Zoe. Thanks for joining us on the show. It's an absolute pleasure. Well, you say that now. I've ever been on. I've. I don't think I've ever been on an audio call with so many people on it. So let's let's see if we can keep all talking over each other uh, for the next. What are you going to say, Dave? But um, so we. (laughs) (laughs) What I was saying. Is that we've just been talking to Margaret Caborn Smith about the uh, the David Nobbs Memorial Trust bursary scheme. She's told us all about it, and now right here with us, we've got this year's winner of the scheme. Um, so Zoe, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how it all came about? Yes. Well, I uh, had a script which I wanted other people to read, and as you know, guys, it's hard to make mm-hmm. people look at your script that is Um, the hard part isn't it yeah well i mean after writing it yeah so i thought i better i better enter some competitions and i saw the david nobbs uh trust award which is open to writers who have one or more broadcast credits but don't have like a main you know haven't written an episode of something so i have a background in i'm actually a producer on panel shows and then i do lots of little bits of additional material on shows but I've been really pushing to do a little bit more scripted so I saw this and I was like oh perfect this is um just my level of thing and I entered and I was extremely surprised to win (laughs) so was this the first uh sort of longer form bursary type thing that you that you entered well I had a debate with myself before I came on here because I'm always telling women writers not to do themselves down and I thought there's two versions of the story I can tell right one is that I wrote the script I smashed it out and then I sent it to David Nobbs and I won the prize and the other is that I've been working on this script for several years and I had entered the exact same draft of this script in fact into at least two other big competitions and one of them, it hadn't got past the first five pages reading stage. Yep. So I felt <laughs> I felt quite cavalier to enter the David Nobbs Award with this same script that had already been rejected. Mm. But then obviously that paid off. So Yeah, it goes to show. Um, awesome, yeah, it, it works. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've just got to keep smashing your face against so, that wall. Yeah, well, eventually, eventually you'll accidentally one of the find a window. One fall out and you can get your lips thrown and... <laughs> Yeah, you can you can start shouting at people for a letterbox. So, c- can you tell us a little bit about the script that you wrote? Yes, so it's called Creeps, and it is about essentially a parasocial relationship between um, three teenage super fans and uh, the object of their affections, who's a kind of washed up actor from an ITV <laughs> crime drama, uh, and they are he actually accidentally kidnaps them um, and then they enter into a kind of strange codependent inappropriate friendship and I have to tell you the inspiration for this script is very much that I was a massive comedy creep when I was a teenager and I think that this script is basically a kind of exploration of what I would have been like as a teenager if I hadn't grown up on an island and there wasn't a body of water between me and Steve Coogan. (laughs) Right. So, okay. So, and did you did you accidentally kidnap anybody as a teenager? I I or... didn't, but I was very small and feeble, so I, I think you would have. But you, so you, you would you would if you could. Yeah. If I yeah. if I'd had more physical strength, maybe I would have done more crime. But as it was, I, I spent my time writing, which has <laughs> worked worked out better. I guess. I think yeah. In the long run, that's probably 
a good thing, isn't it? But yeah, the the script's about so the the actor who doesn't really want anything to do with these teenage girls um, accidentally kidnaps them, and then he sort of realizes that he's actually totally dependent on them because they're the only people who have any kind of real affection for him. So um, yeah, yeah. Okay. so funny and dark at the same time. Yes. It sounds yes, like. definitely. And and some of the more uncharitable feedback that I'd got from other uh, prizes was um, I actually got a note back which was like, why should we find this situation funny? It's actually Ooh. very serious. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's very inappropriate. That's <laughs> yeah. good, though. That means you're writing yeah, good stuff. People are doing things in yes. this script that's yes. very unrealistic. It's almost like it's been written to be funny. I and mean. meanwhile, you were just <laughs> acting out your fantasies. <laughs> No, I'm I'm exercising something from me. Oh, definitely, definitely not not a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> and was it was it written as kind of like a pilot script for a series, or is it a sort of self-contained? Uh, yeah, so this thing? is a it's a pilot uh, for well, it's because it's um it's got a big narrative arc, like a, a dramatic arc. So it's the first episode in a six-part series. Has that ever got close to actually being produced? Or is it sort of still kind of hanging around, waiting to um, be picked it, up? Or it has actually been optioned, Ooh. so that's exciting. Mm, yeah. I mean, I think I'm allowed. I, I just I've just talked about it loads. I think I, I presume I'm allowed to talk about it because I have already given all of those details <laughs> in various <laughs> press for the award. So um, yeah, let's just not. I'll just not uh, tell tell the guys who optioned it about yeah. the podcast. They, they won't be. They won't be <laughs> yeah, listening never listen. anyway. They just need yes. to pull the finger out and get it made, don't they? Then there's not a problem. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Get it, get it done. Yeah. Get it done. What's the problem? The race is on to produce yeah. it now because mm-hmm. I've given I've given the idea. So yeah, that's what I love about David. Well, Zoe, give, can you give us like a, a before and after photo? Uh, for the David Nobbs Memorial Award, has it has it opened doors, or does it feel like you know it's just as hard selling scripts and things? Well, it's certainly. I mean, since I won the award, the script's been optioned, and I've also been signed by an agent. Oh, um, I hadn't actually approached any agents up mm-hmm. until after this. It really gave me the confidence to approach. I I, I won this and got shortlisted. Or, was a finalist in the Funny Women Writing Awards, and I, I won a podcast, a British podcast award as well. And I was this. This was like the critical mass of things where I was like, "Oh, yeah. maybe I am a writer." <laughs> um, so, and then I got in touch, and of course, was like, "I've got three years of, you know, I'm only, I'm not doing loads of writing, but I'm doing a diverse range of gag mm-hmm. writing for TV and, and radio." And they were like, "Well, yeah, I, of course, you're ready to have an agent." So that was very gratifying so yeah it's been really really helpful for me i'm i was just going to say like part of the reason for us doing this uh or these interviews is that for ourselves and a lot of listeners that um they'll be entering a lot of different competitions and bursary schemes and one of the biggest problems with them is that you enter you send your script off and unless you're you know uh lucky enough to win you never sort of hear any feedback you you don't sort of find anything out like yourself you know you, you submit a script and you don't necessarily hear anything back about it until you get the win so we wanted to get a kind of generic feedback for on behalf of all the people who who don't get any feedback for their scripts yes so I think that my big thing with competitions is I've always been quite because I I I, like most uh, writers do lots of other work as well I've been very careful about which competitions I put my energy into and always I think my advice for people entering writing competitions is always make it so that it's useful for you don't enter competitions which you know there's a very specific brief and it's not something you'd normally do Mm. and you're going to spend ages writing a a script that is specifically for that and then you submit it to the competition and you as you say you don't hear anything and then it's like well I wasted all that time I mean for me the competitions are very useful to set a deadline if you're building a portfolio and also to practice writing to a brief etc so Mm. I'd just, I I guess, I think it is really useful to enter competitions like David Nobbs, which are, you know, ethically run and actually useful. And as I say, they've provided me actually with support off the back of it. It's not just been, well, well done. Mm. (laughs) Here's some money and off you go. Um, (laughs) Yeah. 
which you know i'm all, i'm also fine with i don't want to refuse um money and a pat on the back like <laughs> yeah let's just yeah we should say being given money and told to go is not necessarily a bad thing of itself yeah take the money so. and get out that's what i want to <laughs> yeah. hear at the end of every writing day <laughs> never come oh, back when here. i we whenever i leave a building <laughs> yeah um so yeah i think I, I'm always I, when people ask me about entering competitions because I hear it quite a lot from producer side as well from new writers I'm always like just please be careful with your energy use it to um, finalize and consolidate work that you really want to be doing anyway and then it doesn't matter about the competition and it doesn't really matter what these people think the notes can be very useful they can also be very unhelpful and you know I've certainly entered competitions where I've felt well this reader really hates women, so <laughs> he's not going to love my script. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I b basically always use those things to consolidate work that you'd be doing anyway. Yeah, we haven't Good been advice. doing that, have we, lads? No, uh, we haven't been doing that. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Oh, But it's been really great to get a sort of um, a winner's perspective at last uh, on the <laughs> Failing Writers podcast. Hey, uh, so. <laughs> You and me both. <laughs> I'm delighted to get a winner's perspective as yeah. well. Um, but yeah, oh, also I should just say I'd really, um, I really, really recommend that anyone who's eligible applies for the award next year because unlike other ones, it doesn't ask you to do anything, you know, additional that you wouldn't be doing it with your script mm. anyway. Like the supporting materials is is really short and. It doesn't cost any money to enter, which is a really abhorrent yeah. practice that yeah. lots of lots of uh, competitions do. No, so, it sounds like it's set um, in a really yeah, good place, I actually, because asking for the writing credit kind of keeps it serious, if you like, doesn't it? It gets rid of sort of the, the mass entries, um, but then making it really accessible as well. Kind of the best, best of both worlds. Yeah, really totally. Great, so a big a big cheerleading from me. Well, I, well, thanks very much, Zoe, for, for coming in and chatting to us today. Best of luck with all of your future endeavours. Yeah, good luck with everything. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Zoe. And Zoe, 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 Zoe. Now we're, you know, we're finished and everything, but what did you, what have you really done with the money? Did you like buy a TV or something? Or what, what was it? What have you done with it? Holiday? <laughs> it? Well, not a holiday, probably. But... Um, I've actually used it for hush money for all of those people I cool, kidnapped cool, when I was nice. a teenager. That's, that's so. good. It's gone full oh, circle. Yes. That's worked. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was excellent, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Nice to speak to a winner for a change. But I couldn't help thinking uh, when you brought up the point, Tommy, that you need to you need to have a credit. Yeah. And it, that kind of gets rid of the dross. You know? I didn't use the word <laughs> dross. I, was I don't know if you noticed. I was struggling for... Chaff. <laughs> the riffraff, not the riffraff. The bottom but, feeders. No, no, I was they're... thinking at the same time, I am I am. Oh, the yeah, I mean, me too. That's I, like, I couldn't no, apply. I, want, yeah. I couldn't apply yeah. for that. And uh, uh, that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. I, got a yeah. I had a tenuous link. Tell you so what I did like about uh, Zoe when we were talking about tips and stuff, when she was saying about writing for competitions, about not going too far off your own beaten path, doing still doing stuff for yourself yeah. and finding the competitions to fit rather than yeah, searching yeah. for some random competition thing and then, then shoehorning something in that you're never going to be able yeah, to use writing again. something yes. very specific yeah, yeah. That you, that's not really you that's you're not mm. you're doing for the sake of that uh, yeah I've done I've done that for stuff in the past where I've just written what I thought the, that competition was looking for and then looked back on it and gone god grief that was dreadful mm. that's even worse than the stuff that I normally do <laughs> No, it's like, and, but which is weird because, like, I'm specifically trying to do what I think they want, and I end up doing something that's that's so far away from what they're looking for. Yeah, which is why that's such good advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, you yeah. got to be true to yeah. yourself, really, haven't you? I think so. Because then, even if, even if, and when it does fail, at least you, at some point, you were happy with the outcome. Mm. Do you mean it's kind of it existed as something that you thought, yeah, cool, that's that's my thing, that's what I yeah. do. And um, even like Zoe was saying, obviously she's entered, she entered exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly the same thing. Yeah. In other, and, and, and it got knocked back. Yeah. yeah, and got kind of some pretty harsh comments. Do you mean like pretty yeah. full-on criticism and kind of comments on it? It's quite, it's so, so subjective, isn't it? But it's quite, it's quite uplifting in a way to think that, oh, maybe it's just not the right time. Maybe it's just you know, the wrong, the wrong place, the wrong people. Could be though that it's just shit. Could be, and you never know. That's or that's it could be the, the wrong time. Just a difficult. It could be the thing. wrong time, but you're massively behind the curve. It's not that you're ahead of you or on time or anything. 
It's just you're about, <laughs> yeah, about five you'd years be... too late for that, mate. They were making that stuff yeah. back in the 70s. Yeah, 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 yeah something like that. Yeah. It's difficult. That would have been funny in the 1920s music hall, but unfortunately, 100 years later, it's not really cutting the mustard. Hey, everything comes back round. Yeah. But it's true, the, the, two, the competitions that I've done best in is, is stuff where I'd kind of already been working on something and then the competitions come along yeah. and I've been able to, to put something in that I was already working on and quite happy with. So, yeah, the first one, that the Northern Lars thing with Jeremy Dyson. Yeah. I was already kind of working on that idea when when that competition came up. What did you What did you enter, Birdie, for that? I entered. Um, it was. I'm trying to think now. It was like a half hour. Six. I think you had to write a whole the whole half hour script. I, Called the I Gentleman of Leagues. <laughs> I don't think I don't think you had to submit like a plan for the whole series. Uh, as far as I remember, it doesn't sound. I would imagine you wouldn't have. One, if that was the case, because I can't imagine you would have bothered doing that. <laughs> Not at that time. No. And what was uh, it, Dave? What it wasn't the um, uh, the chemist. No, or... no, no. This, no, this was. Um, what was the basic it, premise? The basic premise was about uh, somebody who had suffered a, a sort of men- a nervous breakdown and had been in an institution and was sort of being let out, but they had to have somewhere to go, some family member to look after them. Mm. But their brother was like a bit of a mercenary. And it was it's, it basically is the worst possible flat share that you could move into <laughs> when you just got out of a of a sort of, you know, mental institution. Mm. And it, it, the, the guy ended up having to like sit through an interview, being interviewed by the other housemates for the position of housemate, but keep it secret that he'd been... Uh, you know that sort of thing. Um, mm. That sounds really good, though, Dave. Well, I, it was fair. Th- I can't remember the name of it, but there's a show that there's a show that Ashling B did, uh, and that it, the that the first episode of that, she's sort of being she's leaving some kind of uh, um, facility and moving in with her sister or something like that. Um, so the prim- right, I mean, that sounds completely different, Dave. <laughs> yeah, because yours was exactly, the brother, wasn't totally it? Totally so, different I mean, gender. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so it's I mean, the opposite. But um, but no, it was a similar kind of premise to that. So your but, your uh, script is, I mean, it's been stuck in execution. some cupboard for years and finally got dusted off, and someone's like, "What's this?" Yeah, Dave Baird. He's probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> borrow this. That's what's happened, Dave. Yeah, I think that could. He be won't know. Happened. Just change it. If we just change it from <laughs> yeah. brother to sister, yeah. they'll never know. She's got two series out of that. Blimey. Have you seen any of them? I didn't even get... I did, I think I saw the first episode. Were any of your gags in it? And I remember watching it and thinking, huh, this isn't <laughs> as good as mine. It was. It was probably better, but I was there anyway. This is nothing compared to what I did. <laughs> she probably won a BAFTA for it. Hey, it got you a competition. It got you it a did. workshop with Jeremy it got Dyson. Us, it got us that interview with Jeremy <laughs> Dyson. Go. So, you know, yeah, so, yeah, you don't have to wait good. 10 years so for the it. Sea, so the sea. Yeah. But it is annoying when, when you, well, it's more annoying when you think of something and don't actually bother writing it and then someone has actually written yeah. it. And you have yeah. to concede that, well, they've actually done it and they've probably mm. done it better than I did. Would have yeah. done because I didn't do anything. Um, do you remember um, in series one, at one point, I told you as a young child, I thought I'd invented ambient music. Um, but I yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I found out something else that I've invented that I didn't actually invent as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an idea for a restaurant where all the servers are just really rude to you. Oh yeah, um, that, that does exist, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, but yeah, there is one in America. Uh, um, I think it is, or Canada, yeah. America. Yeah, my in-laws have been there. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> just it'd be, it'd be terrible if you went. Yeah, no, I've been to that one. Such and such. No, that's not it. That's not called that. No, no, but the guys <laughs> were taking the piss out of their hair and stuff. Right, yeah, no, that's not, that's not actually that. that they call me right fat and... No, no, it's a different, different restaurant. Um, but yeah, apparently, so you can kind of uh, indicate to them when you come in whether you want the uh, brusque, rude approach. Oh, the full yeah. hair dryer. Like treatment. a menu. Yeah, it's just... It's yeah. just uh, yeah, so the, just the servers are just really, uh, really rude and stuff. I mean, or if that's too far to go, I guess you could just go to France and just go to a normal restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> joke, little joke there. <laughs> that's not a bad job though is it if you're like if you're an actor yeah no i think a struggling I, yeah. actor and you think i've got to get a job working in a restaurant that's a pretty good restaurant to work yeah. isn't it you just get to take oh, all your frustrations so out on these stupid bloody <laughs> people coming in ordering their pancakes but all with a little smirk of, <laughs> of oh it's all just part of yeah the... yeah but is it is it really it would be good though yeah. wouldn't it? he must get punched occasionally just being able to look directly yeah. in the man's eyes and say and anything for your hideously ugly daughter? <laughs> or has she probably had enough ice cream? I mean, it just would be good, wouldn't it? And everyone just goes, <laughs> how very rude. How very rude. How lovely. 
They're yeah, good. He's, he's very good. He's yeah. very good, isn't he? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, sorry, I digress. That. Um, that's yeah. that's the only other thing invented. What about you? Have you guys ever done any uh, any writing competitions as such? Absolutely nothing. Do you know? Funnily enough, it's something I was looking at in our in our break to sort of do. I thought uh, it would be a, a good thing to because I think it does help set a bit of a deadline as well, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. It just uh, keeps you writing and and just something different so i was looking today as you know i'd said about i had that play idea oh yeah so i've been looking to see if there's some some things with <laughs> long in the future deadlines to enter that into so so oh right so there's a so there's something there's something to actually say uh, right yeah. i'm yeah, writing yeah. it for that yeah yeah there did tend to be quite a few for plays mm. around people looking for plays i found a good website yeah. called writershq.co.uk mm-hmm. have you come across that no yeah. Uh, there's quite, there's quite we a have few. Now. There's quite a few websites with like lists of writing competitions, but this is a particularly good one, I think, and, and partly because it's very easy to scan. If you know what I mean, you've got all your like essential info in the same place. You can see whether they cost any money, how much it costs, what the prize is, what the deadline is, all that kind of stuff, uh, very quickly. Whereas yeah. in some of the lists, the the information is quite buried, and uh, so it takes quite yeah. a long time to sift through. But uh, yeah, have a look at that, writershq.co.uk. And that's got lots of yeah. play stuff. But I was thinking exactly the same thing as you, Tommy. I think if we, whenever we do a task for the podcast, we should sort of check out what competitions are coming up and try and write something. Yeah, yeah, do yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh. For yeah. an actual yeah, double competition. Because it's, it's yeah. nice just writing what you want to write, but it's quite, it's quite good to have something or it's nice or, if there's a point isn't yeah, it yeah have a point well, i and, think that's the point though isn't it rather than looking through the competitions mm. and then going all right i'll enter that one i'll write a poem about geese <laughs> and that's not something you necessarily have been desperate to do <laughs> no. it's saying well, all right yeah i've got this i've got this play idea inside I me and i've had it for a bit and i need to get it out and i should i should write it right let's find some places i could enter that yeah yeah so knowing what the rough idea is it's something mm. i want like zoe was saying it's something i want to do yeah exactly so let's just give it a reason to exist mm. No, totally. Yeah. The other website I found was neonbooks.org.uk. You're not going to go through the and entire internet, are you, John? Because this I'm, is going to be a massive has, episode. That has all the top writing. Sorry, prizes. what was that one, John? That has neon. That is neonbooks.org.uk, but that has like Costa Award and the BBC National Short Story Award with its fifteen thousand pound prize money. Oh, hello. And the Forward Poetry Prize, Ooh, which is free to enter. We should win that one then, shouldn't we? Yeah. I mean, enter that that's one. ten thousand pounds. So that's quite a good one if you're really <laughs> aiming high. Yeah. Just those are better tip. ones, aren't they? Yeah. Reach for the stars, yeah. kids. What did we? We give a hundred pounds away. That was a good competition, <laughs> yeah. that though. We got some brilliant that entries into that. That was a good competition. Yeah, yeah. If anyone's jumped into series two without listening to series one. And you can't be asked listening to series one. You should listen to all of it, but definitely go back and listen to the ones about the competitions. Yeah, because some of the stuff in there is brilliant, and the and the ones that we picked out and the ones that won and the runners up, brilliant stuff. And we had we had really good, loads of fun reading them, and it was such a mixed bag we got yeah. in, wasn't it? Yeah, in terms of styles and kind of uh, content and stuff. Um, we should do another. We should do another competition this we season. We should because that was. Do you know what really we should do this yeah, week? Yeah. Need to think. We should have a competition for the best competition idea. Oh yeah, so get yes. people to send in ideas. Send in your what, ideas. And then for a what genre and what style and what idea of competition? Yeah, you can win a very slightly out of date Easter egg, which might have been half eaten by John. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> possibly depends, half. Depends whether it's at the front or the back of the cupboard. Yeah, if it was if it's a children's egg, no chance. Yeah, let's do um, that. But okay. yeah. If you're sitting there thinking, oh, I've got a great script, and but I don't have a competition to enter mm. into, tell us. Just tailor the competition around yeah. your script. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, even, this is one step further than writing for yourself <laughs> and then finding a competition. Create your yeah. own competition. You've written for yourself, and now you can create your own Brilliant. competition. Perfect. Brilliant. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. Send, send your competition ideas to failingwriterspodcast at gmail.com or at failingwriters yeah. on the social. Yeah, and, uh, and title yeah. your email. Ooh! I've got a competition idea. <laughs> How many O's? But don't don't forget the ooh. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. Yeah, yeah. if anyone, if, if obviously if the title's not spelled correctly, we will. <laughs> yeah, I'll just go straight to junk. I think, won't it? Yeah. But oh, the, it, it can't, just saying that about you know you should always try to sort of um, if you enter a competition something that you've already been working on. Sometimes, occasionally, it can work the other way that you went you you start on something for a competition and then it turns into something else that you're actually really interested in. Mm. So. My friend Andy and I, I can't even remember what the competition was for now. It was, it was a play thing. They were looking for plays, short plays, based around a park bench. And it had to be a comedy, mm. and it had to have some sort of connection to a park bench. And we thought, oh, we should do something for that. And 
we sort of dismissed the load of sort of, you know, fairly standard ideas. And then it, we settled on this idea in the end around like a mythology almost. You know, you get like uh, park benches get dedicated to people. So you get little plaques mm. that say, you know, such and such a person. Oh, they loved it mm. here. Well, the concept behind this play is that when you die, your spirit is free to roam the earth and go wherever you want for all time. Unless somebody dedicates a park bench to you, <laughs> in, in which point your spirit is then tethered to that bench for all eternity. Oh, and you can't go outside cool. like a two meter radius of that bench. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the play is based around a bench as somebody has just died and had a bench dedicated mm. to them. And they've just arrived. Absolutely at that bench. cursing. Yeah, absolutely. Family. Trying to figure out like why they can't leave. <laughs> And, it, <laughs> and we didn't get anywhere in the competition, but I'm like, I actually really like the idea. I'd like to, I'd like to do something more with that. I think it'd be quite fun. Did you write it? Was it like a short? No, well, it, you had to sort of. Sub, well, you had to submit like a sample. I think it was like a sample page or a sample two pages mm. of dialogue. So, uh, like, ideally, you'd have written a bit of the play and, and choose a good bit. We kind of had to because it was all a bit of a rush. Like, try and just write a couple of pages of stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'd love to write more of it. Yeah, you've, you've slightly changed my mind there, Dave. I was all on board with the write what you want <laughs> to write for you and then find the competition. But actually, you there is something. And you know, I was thinking it's almost what we did in, in season one was was um, giving ourselves lots of different writing challenges that were slightly out of our comfort zone in places. And do you know yeah. I mean, writing little horror stories. And yeah. I've got no interest in horror, but yeah. doing it or mm. doing the 100-word flash fiction and the 250-word flash fiction and... and writing a historical fiction story. Do you mean, that would, none of that would be what I chose to do, mm. but actually doing it was a good exercise. Well, so, yeah, sometimes it works. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. the point, isn't it? Is like, uh, you just got to try stuff and sometimes, and it doesn't matter if it turns yeah. out to be rubbish, just give it a try. But some, you know, you never know what's going to be the right thing. Yeah, it's worth, it's worth checking that website uh, when we're planning a task and just seeing if there is a competition that relates vaguely to it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, that's that's led us quite nicely onto some more wishy washy failing writers' advice. That hasn't <laughs> so definitely do yeah. just write for yourself and write what you really believe in. But also, or, unless you yeah. don't, and then write something else yeah. for someone else into their genre that yeah. they specified. One of those two things. One of those two opposing things could. Be it's not bad advice because both of those things actually involve writing rather, exactly. rather than yeah, doing the usual failing don't. writers are going. Oh, exactly. I meant to write. I, I did have an idea for something, but someone has done it on Netflix now, so what's yeah. the point? We yeah. could have summed this into... We didn't really need to do this podcast, but we could have just summed it up with just write something. Yeah. That's really <laughs> the, the, the one bit of advice that's come out of all of it. Yeah. Just get on with it. Yeah. But things things do come out of your your little odd bits, your little curiosities <laughs> as well, don't they? <laughs> all right, yeah. <laughs> weird sentence. That came out Very wrong. Very weird phrasing, yeah. That came out yeah. wrong. Um. yeah. Like like the murder mystery, like Dave has almost finished a murder mystery book. Yeah, and yeah. that wouldn't have happened. Never thought that. I've not just written that one page. Million years, so yeah. You got it. But that's the way like Jeremy's notebooks. Yeah, it's but it's an interesting yeah, thing because that yeah. I think I mentioned this before, but that the, the the germ of that idea started off as like a screenplay about like based around the the sort of murderer or the you know the the comedian, and it's turned into a book mm. about the police officer so it's, it's mm. a totally different kind of thing which like you said i'd never have got to that if we hadn't have just tried mm. different uh genres and different you know styles of doing stuff so i think maybe maybe there's a an extra little task in there somewhere maybe we we each need to find procure our own competition separately and uh enter yeah. something yeah okay actually enter yeah, have a look at that website and have think a, about yeah, it yeah have a little delve yeah yeah pick something okay. well, it could be anything just pick Something that you're currently working on or something that's been there or a story about trees falling in love or something <laughs> and um, and find a competition. To Preferably enter. something yeah. short because uh, we've got quite a lot on our plates, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I only, I only suggested that then because I'd already decided that that's something I was going to do anyway. Yeah. So we may yeah. as well get some, uh, <laughs> some credit for it while we go yeah, along yeah. and make you two do it. Uh -huh. It just seemed like a good idea. Which brings us back, brings us back to the entire point of this season and that is... Our sitcom. Yes. Yes. Do we need to prep anything for our meeting? We're going to have a, we're going to take half a day off. Yeah. I think we've decided on the day, yep. ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Uh, <laughs> what Look at we... this amazing progress. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we've come a nosebleed speed of progress. <laughs> what are we bringing to 
the uh, our first writing session? Um, I was thinking probably uh, definitely some pretzels, mm-hmm. maybe yeah. some nuts, yeah. some, some bugles. bugles. I do like um, bugles. What's a bugle? Oh, yeah. Do you put them on the end of your fingers? Sometimes, yeah. Like, like little wizards. The, little hats, yeah. yeah. What's a bugle? What? It's a conical crisp bib. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you've, it's a conical you've, corn you've snack forgot, crisp You've forgotten bib. your roots, you two. You've worked you've not in class roots. you, Dave. You've not lived. What's wrong with a normal crisp? <laughs> Nothing wrong with a normal crisp, Dave. Conical crisp. bugle. On the end of your fingers. Mm. Have it in my day. Yeah, no, in, in, do you mean in terms of research and stuff, John, rather than snacks? And beverages. Uh, that was, yeah, that was kind I, of what I was thinking I think, about. I think. Just as important. Because we, I think yeah. we decided that we need, there are going to be five main characters. I think we decided that, didn't we? Yeah. And we've got some wishy-washy ideas of characters. I think, yeah. as a minimum, when we have our half day, we both need to arrive with five defined characters each. And then from. When you say we both. Both, two, or... both. I, as in all three both of me us. And you, yeah, John. both means. Well, Dave turns up and just goes, "Yeah, they look yeah. all right." You, you both, both need to have you, done this. You both need to have come up with five <laughs> but, characters. But I don't. And then I will Dave also. Dave doesn't because he's organising it. If only there was, oh, I see. That's fine. Is there a word? Yeah, don't, don't worry, Dave. Hang on. This is going to be another one of those when I say, "Is there a word for?" And it's exactly <laughs> the. <laughs> is there a word? It's like both, but for all three. All three? I think it's just all yeah. three, isn't it? All three of us mm-hmm. need to arrive with five characters mm-hmm. each, which we will then mash together into so a going to be ca- It's character day. Is that what we're yeah. saying? I, I okay. think so. And then I think, we'll book another half day in for story yeah, arc. Yeah, I think let's just make Do you know what? decision. Come, just cause, just cause. Come with a load of... Uh, little funny story ideas yeah, as well. Yeah, if you can do that as well, great. Chuck them in the pot because then we can hopefully we can merge them in some characters. Yeah, yeah. Link them, link them to. Yeah, start linking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start seeing what actually works. Yeah, and with what? Because if we love a uh, love a, a particular sort of little story or little comic bit, then the characters sort of need to fit around it, don't they? So yeah, I think it's it'd be difficult to avoid thinking of some stories. Yeah. Whilst thinking of the characters, cool. isn't it? But yeah, let's. If we yeah. can do that, that should be. Bring them. If we need a task, a deadline, five characters nailed down. Bring them in. Bosh, off we go. Yeah, BAFTA. Okay. <laughs> okay so we're we saying five. Are we saying five characters each that we bring? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And five little story bits as well, just to give us something yep. to aim and for. And there are yeah. five letters in okay. BAFTA. I think that's like. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Kind of... It's a sign. Yeah. yeah. And the character should be called Bobby Alfie. We're not doing Bobbies again, Dave. <laughs> Just... Bobby Brown. None of the characters are called Bobby Brown. <laughs> it's not going to happen, Bloody Dave. hell. Why? He's already planted the oh, seed. Perfectly. He's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, right, there we go. We've got our task. Let's, uh, let's go and get on with it then. Okay, let's do it. All right, chaps. Well, um, it's been jolly nice speaking to you. It really has. As always. An absolute and, and to all these people as well, mm. Tom. Don't forget yeah, the other no, people we've been it's, speaking it's to. It's lovely. It's lovely. It really is. Yeah. Do you know what? I can't wait till next week. Yeah. Is it, uh, you know, it can't come quick enough. Yep. Let's not even say what we've got coming up next week. No, let's not. It's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> It's a surprise for everyone, yeah, including us. It really will be. Uh, can't wait. Uh, so can't until then, wait. dear listeners, dear friends, adieu. Hello? Hello? Where's everybody gone? <laughs> the sense of self-belief that we all think. Yeah, yeah, this is the, yeah. It's all going yeah, yeah, to happen, isn't it? <laughs> We're all going to turn up with all the stuff to yeah. this meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course we are. Of course we are. And then we can uh, look for some competitions to enter it into as well there once we go. finish the entire sitcom. Yep. Yep. We won't need the competition. Yeah. Get... It's going to get made. It's going to get commissioned. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah, we'll look for some competitions. <laughs> yeah. And just think about what suit you'd wear on Jonathan Ross, perhaps. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah.